S1 up through Sn minus 1, such that the braid relations hold, but also Si squared is the identity. Okay, so here Si is just the permutation that switches I and I plus 1. Okay, and here the homomorphism as I set Q equal to 1. Okay, and then this relation here is just the braid relation. And what's the composite homomorphism here? It says take a braid, okay, if I follow the strands from left to right, I get a permutation on the ends of the braid, okay? One, two, three, here goes to three, yeah, so one goes to three, two goes to one, three goes to two. Now, yeah, you should think of the, this heck algebra as being kind of a fancy deformed version of the group ring of the symmetric group, where we've inserted this Q. And in particular, a lot of things about the representation theory of the heck algebra are closely related to the representation theory of the symmetric group, Sn. Okay, but now, uh, you know, I'm going to keep this presentation. Um, let me not erase this yet. Instead, <clears throat> let me say that there's actually a better set of generators or the heck algebra, which is I take bi, which is q minus ti. So in other words, ti is q minus bi. You'll notice that this looks awful, an awful like, lot like the map from the Bray group to the temporally Lieb algebra that I just managed to erase. Um, and then in this, right, this, this is clearly a perfectly good set of generators. So I could change variables in this presentation over here to express all the relations in terms of the Bs. And when I did that, I'd find that Hn has a presentation that looks like this, B1 up through Bn minus 1. Um, I still have far commutativity. Um, Bi, Bj is Bj, Bi. I minus J are far apart. Um, now I get a relation that looks just like in the temporally Lieb algebra. Bi squared is quantum two times Bi. And then the Reitermeister three move turns into this relation. Bi plus Bi, Bi plus one, Bi minus Bi is equal to the same thing with the roles of I and I plus one switched. Bi. Bi plus 1 minus Bi plus 1, okay? And you see in the temporally Lieb algebra, these relations, this relation holds because actually both of these terms are zero in the temporally Lieb algebra. And these are the same as the relations we had here, so that means I have a homomorphism, let's call it P2, from Hn to Tln that sends, well, Bi to Bi. Okay. All right, and so now, um, now, what we're going to do is say that the Homfley polynomial is defined in much the same way that the Jones polynomial was. So um, put this down as the theorem of Akhnianu. Okay, so there exists maps T 
TRN mapping from HN to, let me just say, Z, A, and Q. Okay, such that, um, such that what? You know, I'm going to write these properties over here. Uh, Um, okay, so one is that it's a trace, so TRN of XY is TRN of YX. Two is that um, if I look at the inclusion, let's call this yoda from HN into HN plus one, so if I take the trace of n plus 1 of yoda of x, this is, let me call it squiggly 0, times the trace on n of x. And 3 is that the trace on n plus 1 of yoda of x times bn is squiggly 1 times TRN of X. Okay, where squiggly N, that's AQ to the minus N minus A inverse Q to the N over A minus A inverse. Okay. And so The construction of these traces basically just relies on <coughs> taking some standard tricks in the representation theory of Sn and applying them to the Heck algebra. Okay, and then say P of sigma bar, let's call this a definition, P of sigma bar, P twiddle of sigma bar is going to be the trace on n of um, map psi of sigma. Okay, so that's the best definition, really, of what this Humphrey polynomial is. It is, it is this trace. Okay, but what I'd like, <laughs> I'd like to talk about a little bit is a pictorial interpretation. Um, where, so what we should think about is the same way we drew elements of, or generators of TLN as tangles and generators of the braid group as tangles. Similarly, we should draw these BIs in HN. And the way that we'll draw them is we'll put a little kind of graph with a thick edge here and two trivalent vertices. That's the picture that we draw. Um, and, right, so for example, um, if I have B1, B1, this would be represented by a picture that looks like this. These come apart and come back together again like that. Okay, and these are sometimes called MOI diagrams. And I'll also write this as the bracket of psi of sigma. Um, okay. And we'll talk more about these MOI diagrams in the next lecture. Okay, so now, um, here we have the Heck algebra. So one thing that's true, right, is that I said the Heck algebra is kind of a deformation of the group ring of the symmetric algebra. So the dimension of HN over that ring R is the same thing as the dimension of Z of SN over Z 
which is the size of the symmetric group, is n factorial. Okay, and so there's a sort of nice basis for HN called the hardest thing here is to spell Kajdan and Lustig properly. Okay. I don't want to define this basis in general, but I'll just discuss it by example in the case n equals 3. Okay. Um, so let's call this, this basis will be B sigma, oops, B s, where s runs over the set s n. Okay. And so, for example, B of the identity element is just 1 in the algebra. B1 is the thing I called V1. If I have B12, that's the permutation that I get by multiplying S1 and S2. This is B1, B2, and B21, B2, B1. So far, everything is very stupid looking. Um, but the interesting thing, and I should keep this here for one more second, is the permutation associated to the longest word, 1 to 1 in Sn. So B 1 to 1, this is, you know, let me leave that board up, but let me just go over here. B one two one is B one B two B one minus B one, which is the same thing as B two B one B two minus B two. And notice from looking at this, I can see that if I take B i times this B one two one, um, it's the same thing as B one two one times B i which is always just quantum 2 times B121. Okay. And in particular, with respect to this basis, all the sort of structure constants of the multiplication are positive. It's sort of positive powers of Q. Um, so this is what was called the Kajdan. You know, let's go over here. originally conjectured by Kajdan and Lustig, and then proved by Berenstein, Bylinson, Brylinski, and Kashawara. Um, so let's just write it this way. Oops. B, S, B, T. Well, that's, this is a basis. It's necessarily equal to B, S, T, U, oops, C, S, T, U times B, U. Um, where all of these CUSTs have positive coefficients. Okay. And actually, this, this phenomenon is one of the first appearances of the notion of categorification. Um, so there are lots of different ways to think about this theorem, but probably the easiest one was discovered by Sergel. Okay. Yes, that's right. Right, okay, so, uh, okay, so my name's, all right. So if I write, for example, 1, 2, 1, that's supposed to mean the permutation S1, S2, S1. Okay, yes. Okay. So Sorgel proved this theorem by thinking about consider, let's say, Rn, Rn bimodules. 
Okay, so those are modules where I can multiply on the left by my ring Rn and on the right by my ring Rn. The actions aren't necessarily the same, where Rn is just a polynomial ring and n variables. Okay. That's, if you think about it, that's exactly the same thing as, let's kind of say, at R twiddle n modules, where R twiddle n is just the ring where I take x1, x2, um, oops, say x1 up through xn, and then y1 up through yn. Okay, so these x's are the left action of Rn, and these y's are the right action of Rn. So for example, the identity by module here is one which is um, Rn, which is the same thing as taking Rn twiddle and dividing by the relations that Xi is Yi. Okay. Okay, so circle defined modules Bi. Um, so that's, here I'll think about it as Rn twiddle modulo the relations that xi is, oops, let's say xj is yj for um, j not equal to i or i plus 1, and then x1 plus x2 is y1 plus y2, and x1, x2 is y1, y2. Okay. And I can multiply these just by taking tensor products with respect to the Rn's. So I could start with these Bi's and just start taking all the possible tensor products that I could see. And then looking for indecomposable factors. Okay. And what Sergal proved. Yep. Oh, yeah, these are supposed to be i and i plus 1. Thank you very much. Um, definitely. i, i plus 1. So one thing that he proved is that these b's satisfy um, and you know, really, yeah. The relations in the Heck algebra, and let's say, maybe let me just write B1. Here I'm going to use B1, B2, and B1. This is a module, let me call it B121 plus B1 where B1 to 1 is R to N, Rn twiddle. And notice that really what I did is I took the elementary symmetric functions, this is the first elementary symmetric functions in the x's, and set it equal to the first elementary symmetric function in the y's. And this is the second elementary symmetric function. So here I take all three elementary symmetric functions in x1, x2, and x3. So let's say, say e1 of the x's is e1 of the y's, e2 of the x's is e2 of the y's, and e3 of the x's is e3 of the y's. Okay. And this relation here exactly categorifies this definition over here. Okay. Sorry, is that bracket 
Yeah, that's right. All the brackets are always going to be quantum integers. And so, right, okay, good. So what does it mean? I'm sorry. Um, so these are graded. Okay, so the grading of xi is 2. And I should have really said that this is q inverse times this. So in other words, the grading of 1 in here is really the element 1 in this ring is really minus 1. Okay, and then this multiplication by q is shifting the grading up by 1 or down by 1. Okay. So Sorgel showed that um, the set of indecomposable sum ends of things that I get by taking iterated tensor products of these BIs is actually a finite set consisting of B, let's say, S, where S is an SN. And if I take BS times BT, this is a direct sum, C, S, T, U, B, U, are these numbers here are the same, okay? And th this is the reason that these coefficients are positive, right? Because I can't have a negative direct sum. <coughs> okay. What's this all got to do with categorifying a Humphrey polynomial? So remember, we have Sigma i went to um, q minus b i in the Heck algebra. Okay, and similarly, sigma i inverse went to q inverse minus b i. Okay, so Rukier. showed that um, there is a well-defined map say, BRN, to complexes in let's say that SPMN is the category whose objects are direct sums of the BSs with grading shifts, and morphisms are morphisms of bimodules. Okay. And this sends sigma i to, um, let's say, q times 1 to a complex that looks like this, sigma i inverse to a complex that looks like um, bi goes to q inverse times 1. And there's some map s prime here. Okay. And um,
So I have to tell you what these maps are, okay? And to do that, let's just work in the case n equals two, right? So for example, B1, that's R2n modulo these relations, x1 plus x2 is y1 plus y2, and x1, x2 is y1, y2. Okay, but I could just use this to eliminate y2, let's say. This linear relation means I can just get rid of y2. This is the same thing as the ring z of x1, x2, y1, modulo the relation that um, x1 minus y1 times x2 minus y1 is zero. And on the other hand, um, this module one, that's, well, this, but I could again eliminate y2 if I felt like it. This is z of x1, x2, y1, modulo um, the relation that x1 equals y1. Okay, and so here we have, um, what do we have? So I have S mapping from one B1, what does that do? Well, it just takes one in here and multiplies by x2 minus y1. And S prime going from B1 to one takes one in here and it just sends it to one. Right? This is a perfectly good map. This is like sending Z mod six to Z mod two by sending one to one. Okay, so um, I'm now operating in negative time. I'm sorry about that. So let me just finish quickly by saying, so Rukier showed that this is really a well-defined map in the homotopy category of complexes. Okay, what's the analog of taking the closure? It turns out that the analog of taking the closure is Hochschild homology. So there's a functor, let's call it HH, from Rn bi modules to Rn modules, let's say graded. Okay. And uh, so Kovanov. showed that, let's say, HHH of sigma bar, that's what I get by taking the homology of, I take the functor, which is Hochschild homology, apply it to this complex of bimodules, sigma, C sigma, and then take homology of that complex. So this categorifies, um, P, so HH here plays the role of the Akhneanu trace. Okay, all right, and I'm sorry, that, uh, this was a little bit too quick. Um, yes, yeah, so C is, yes, is it, did I not call this map C? Yes, there is a well-defined map C going here. Okay, all right, so I'll stop now, and um, so we'll come back and talk some more about colored homology in the afternoon. Mm -hmm.